I love them. You guys love them. You can make these for the freezer. You can make them for right now in the crock pot or the instant pot or the stove top. We are going to make turkey bouillonnaise. You can absolutely make this with ground beef instead of turkey. I'm just mixing it up a little bit this time. I've already got my bag labeled and ready to go. Easily can be done on the stove top, instant pot, crock pot. It's all dump and go, okay? So I've already browned up the ground turkey. You would do that first. If you're cooking it in the crock pot, you're gonna cook it on low for five to six hours or high for three to four. If you're cooking it in the instant pot, you're gonna cook it on high for 25 minutes sealed. I will have those directions in the instant pot with the recipe linked. And then you can also garnish this with parsley and hang on. You're actually gonna serve this over some really beautiful egg noodles. This one is so delicious. Obviously it's dump and go for the sauce, but you're gonna have to cook the noodles separately. But I love this, so easy for us to take with us. So let's set up the bag here. I'm gonna put the bag a little bit over to the side. So like I said, I already cooked up the ground turkey. Let's transfer that ground turkey into the bag. Like I said, this one is gonna feed everybody, literally all the people, okay? Let me know in the comments down below, when you guys watch these videos, do you typically make these dump and go recipes and you make them for that night or are you making them like freezer meals? I'm just curious, it doesn't matter how you do it. Just curious on how that works for your household. Now, another thing that we're gonna add to this, even though I already have some cooked bacon, we're actually gonna add some uncooked bacon to this. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it though. Okay, so that's just two slices. You can add more if you want. You add whatever you wanna add. You guys know I say that all the time. Address, adjust recipes to what you love. Okay, that is good, ready to go. So here is one thing that's great. If you're doing these like freezer meals, I am in here, I'm standing in here making several freezer meals at a time and I'm throwing all of it into the sink and then I'm gonna, at the end, I'll wash all the dishes, put them in the dishwasher and they'll be done. And then the day that I go to make this, nothing gets dirty again, except my crock pot or my instant pot. Okay, the recipes that I'm looking at call for you to add a cup of water. I'm not really a fan of adding water to stuff like this. As it's cooking along, if I feel like it needs excess liquid, I will add that. I'd rather not add water and then it, ha it be too watery. So I'm gonna hold off on adding any water at all till we get to the end and see what it looks like. Let's add about a half cup of red wine vinegar. This is actually an ingredient that I have come to love so much recently. I don't know, you just, it elevates recipes quite a bit. So right around a half cup, I think it's gonna be perfect. Maybe just, hmm, let's do it. Let's go for the full half cup. I might need to buy a new bottle, but that is okay. Okay, so we've got some red wine vinegar, love it. Now you can absolutely buy a can, a can, a bag of frozen carrots. I'm going to go ahead and shred these up. You can dice these, but I just really like my little cheese grater thing and it's perfect for these, so we're gonna shred them. And also, for the sake of saying it again, if you don't have a peeler that works well, getting one that does will change your life. It's amazing. I have been working with a vegetable peeler for years that is was awful. And I got new ones on Amazon. They came in a two pack for like 10 bucks. Game changer. Now I'm gonna add three carrots because I like carrots. If that's not something that you like, you could absolutely leave it out. You could add less, add more if you want. I'm actually pretty sure that I use this thing almost every single day. There are similar ones on Amazon that I have linked in my storefront, I'm telling you is the best purchase ever. <laughs> All right, carrots shredded. Absolutely just dice them if you don't have a shredder like that available, or I mean, you can shred them by hand if you want, but feel free to dice these. That's actually the traditional way to do it. This was just real easy. All right, next we are going with a can of diced tomatoes. I am not going to be draining these. The whole thing's gonna go in. This is part of the reason why I say I like to wait until the end to add any water, broth, things like that, because if we're not draining these cans, you might get in there and go, eh, I don't know that it needs any. Let's add in a can of tomato sauce. 
add whatever kind of tomato sauce you like, you prefer. Like I said, this is gonna feed all the people. The recipe actually calls for 12 ounces of tomato paste. I'm only gonna be adding six ounces. I do have another can out there, but 12 ounces of tomato paste is a lot. It's a lot, a lot. So you can feel free to add the 12 if you would like, but I'm just gonna go with the six. Cause you know, tomato paste, this is one of those ingredients where typically recipes only want you to use um, like a tablespoon and you end up with all this tomato paste that you end up having to freeze or figure out what to do with it. So we're just gonna go with just the one can. But bouillonnaise does typically have a lot of tomato paste, uh, just the nature of the recipe. So feel free to add both cans. I'm just choosing to add one. We are also going to add some honey into this. So you could add sugar if you don't like honey or you don't use honey or don't have honey, but honey is a great option for this. We're gonna add about two teaspoons and I'm not gonna measure, just roughly two teaspoons. We also want to add some rosemary. You definitely need rosemary for this. You can use crushed, mine is not, it's just dried rosemary. And you need about two tablespoons. Actually, let's just go ahead and take the lid off for this one because we need quite a bit. So two tablespoons of that. Also feel free to cut this recipe down if you need to. We also need two tablespoons of oregano and that is going to finish this off. This is actually only probably one tablespoon. So I'm gonna have to get more oregano. I am gonna add some salt even though most recipes don't call for it. Adding about a teaspoon. And because we don't use onion, I'm using some onion powder probably also around a teaspoon. Okay, now that I'm looking at this one, I do feel like it needs a little bit of liquid. So you could add chicken broth or chicken stock or something like that to this. You do not have to add water. I think that is actually what I'm going to do. And then as it's cooking, if you see that it's too thick, just add a little bit more. And that is it for this one. So good, ready to go. Serve this over top, those egg noodles. I mean, <laughs> this is a huge amount, you guys, especially since it goes with noodles. This is one of those recipes, y'all, you need to plan to either cut it. Ooh, we need to double bag. This is one of those recipes where if you wanna cut it down or put it into two separate bags, that might be a good idea. The other option is just cut this recipe in half or feed everybody in your neighborhood. You know what? Here's what I've decided. This would easily, with the noodles, feed our family for two nights plus a lunch, maybe more, because I mean, it's such a big amount. So I am actually gonna separate this into two separate bags. We're gonna take one with us and then we'll have one at home. Like I said, this is something that you can easily do if you have less people in your family, you wanna feed less, you wanna separate it out over different nights. I just feel like that's the best choice. It, this is one of our favorites. White chicken chili is just so delicious. All right, guys, we are going to start. Actually, before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and label my bag. You guys know we gotta do that. You can skip this part if you're gonna be making this all right now and just dumping it into your Instant Pot or your crock pot. So basically with the crock pot, we are just going to, we're gonna cook on low for six-ish hours, on high for four hours. And I make really, little notes for mine when I write on them because I know what I'm talking about, but make as many notes on your bag as you feel like you need to add. Okay, for the Instant Pot, we're just gonna cook on high 15 to 18 minutes. We're gonna get started with all of our ingredients. I do have chicken thighs. I have absolutely done this before. With chicken breasts, you can do it either way. It is not a big deal. That is not something that's going to affect the recipe that much. I have a good pair of kitchen shears, and so that's what I'm gonna be using to cut up these chicken thighs, and I'm gonna put them straight into the bag. It's totally up to you. If you wanna go ahead and cut them up, that's fine as well. I just think if I have these out, I may as well use them. I'm gonna be careful to trim off some of the fat just because I'm not a big fan. All right, so you guys see me make quite a bit of freezer meals here, and that is actually something, we use it a lot in our household. 
um, on nights when there are certain nights when maybe I have worship practice at church in the evening or something like that, but I wanna put a good hot meal on the table, or maybe we've been out of the house a lot that day, there's appointments or the kids have activities or whatever it may be. I feel like for us, freezer meals just make my life so much easier. And this one, this in particular video that I'm doing right now, we are actually, let me not cut the paper towel. We are actually going to be taking these freezer meals with us to the beach. If we're on vacation. We also like to be able to eat at home. I know what recipes we enjoy. I know what flavors we're gonna love and we're gonna save money by taking some of it with us. And if we're gonna be at the beach, I definitely don't wanna spend the entire time of us being there just standing in front of the stove all day long. So I like to prep things like this before we go and then it's ready to go. We can throw it in the crock pot while we're down at the beach. We don't have to worry about it. And then that evening, I didn't have to stand in front of the stove, but we have a nice home cooked meal. This video isn't really all about freezer meals, but I think a lot of people think that freezer meals don't make sense for their family because maybe there's only one of you or two of you. My suggestion to that is absolutely it is for you as well. What I would do is instead of putting all of it in one bag, I would have three or four bags right in front of you and just split the ingredients in between those bags. And then what you're getting is three to four freezer meals that you can pull out over the course of the next six months or so. And I'm getting one, which both are great, but it's gonna help you as well. We've got our chicken in the bag, that's ready to go. We are going to add about a teaspoon of oregano. So I'm not gonna measure this, I just do this by sight. We love oregano. So typically, even when it says a teaspoon, I will go a little bit more. You add whatever flavors you love, keep those flavors out, scale them back, add more, whatever it is that you wanna do, depending on the flavors that you enjoy. We're gonna add in some cumin. This is another one that we absolutely love. I love the taste of cumin in a recipe. This one calls for about a half teaspoon, so I'm going closer to a teaspoon. That's actually probably like a teaspoon and a half. We definitely need to add a little bit of salt. We're gonna go right around a teaspoon of that as well. Okay, so we've got all that. Now the next thing that we like to add, and you can go as mild, medium, or hot with these as you want, this is a can of green chilies. We love green chilies in our white chicken chili. It's delicious. Now I am going to drain these, so we're gonna open up the can. Not even hardly enough to drain. So we're gonna go ahead and add that into our bag, and I add the whole can. Totally up to you whether you wanna add the whole can or not. Now, a lot of people add onion to their white chicken chili. We are not, so we are gonna add some onion powder. And I'm gonna go with probably a half teaspoon or so, maybe closer to three fourths. And then we're gonna add minced garlic. This is something that I enjoy no matter what. We always add more minced garlic than what a recipe says. If you haven't noticed, I really like flavor. So we're gonna go with probably around a teaspoon. This is my half teaspoon measure. And that's that's probably two garlic cloves-ish. Now, the next thing that we always do is double the amount of beans in a white chicken chili. This is one of those recipes, like obviously you already have good protein in this because you've got the, the chicken. I like a lot of beans. I also like the fact that for something like this, when I can throw in an extra can of beans that is you know, just over a dollar or so, it's gonna stretch that meal and we might even be able to get lunch out of it in the next day. So we pretty much always add two cans of beans. I always drain and rinse our beans though. I also don't know if I mentioned, but we're using great northern beans. I've actually also used cannellini for this before as well. I don't think it matters. You should use whatever kind of white bean you like. Okay, we're gonna pour all of those in there. Now, a lot of people add corn to their white chicken chili. We actually love corn, but for some reason, none of us really care for it being mixed into things. So things like chicken pot pie, um, I don't know, when you think of corn, oh, shepherd's pie, that's another one. We prefer it on the side. So I'm leaving the corn out of this. If you like to do corn in yours, absolutely throw some corn in there. I'm gonna add a touch of lime juice, just about a teaspoon. That's all you need. All right, we've got some non-fat plain Greek yogurt here. You can use full fat Greek yogurt. It does not need to be 
uh, non-fat, you can also use sour cream. That's what most recipes call for. I'm gonna add about a half a cup into this. Now, another thing I have done many of times, many times when I've made white chicken chili is add in cream cheese and that is delicious. So I don't have any in my fridge right now. That's something I need to go to the grocery store for. But I will say when I go to actually make this one, there's a good chance that I will add about two to four ounces of cream cheese right at the end. It just adds to that creaminess and it elevates it. It's so good that way. So if that's not something you wanna add right away, you can always uh, write on your bag, add you know cream cheese. All right, we make our own chicken broth or bone broth. For this recipe, you need in between three and five cups. I typically will start with more along like the three and a half to four. If I need to add more, I absolutely can, but you wanna add that. That's gonna help everything cook up nicely, blend everything together, so good. Some of it is still a little bit frozen. Chick, uh, chicken stock is a staple or bone broth is a staple in our house. We've got all of this in the bag ready to go. Another thing that I am going to do is in a little separate baggie because I already have bacon cooked and ready to go and I don't wanna have to worry about it the day that I make this. If you top white chicken chili with a little bit of sour cream or Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt, and a, a little bit of like cut avocado and some crumbled bacon, that will take it over the top for sure. So because I already have that cooked and ready to go, I want to add a little baggie of that. And I think I'm actually gonna double bag this one, especially since we are taking, it is not closing properly. There we go. Especially since we are gonna be taking this in a cooler to the beach, I'm gonna end up double bagging. Let's go ahead and get some bacon. You can crumble it before you put it in the bag. You can crumble it later. It'll freeze nicely. You don't have to worry about it at all. But at least that part is ready to go and I don't have to worry about that. Look, crumbles and done. All right, let's double bag. I can put this bag in here. You can put all your toppings in there if you want, but I think this will be good. And there you go, all in the bag, ready to go. As I'm thinking about this, I cut up the chicken into pieces and technically you don't even need to do that because you're gonna be shredding it. You can definitely just put your chicken in there whole. I think I was skipping ahead to another recipe in this video, but either way, it's totally fine. So you're just gonna cook this up, shred that chicken after it's been in the crock pot or the instant pot for a little bit. Another thing that sometimes I will do is when we make white chicken chili, I will, I'm not gonna do it at the beach probably because I don't think we have a good enough blender down there, but I will pull out about three fourths a cup of this soup straight out of the crock pot or instant pot, okay? Put it into the blender and puree it. What that does is when you pour it back into the soup, it kinda acts like a thickening agent and you're gonna get, a, it's, it's just all incorporating in and it thickens it up a little bit. Totally up to you, that's just another tip that I have. All right, you guys, this next recipe is a family favorite. Absolutely, we love this one every single time. All right, you may have done Mississippi pot roast before, but we love Mississippi chicken. It's just so good. I had to stop and think about how to spell Mississippi. Mississippi chicken. So this is gonna just cook low, six to eight hours or high. Uh, like three to four hours-ish, okay? And we are using chicken thighs. Feel free to use chicken breasts if that's what you want, but I think that the chicken thighs are so delicious in this. So they're going straight into the bag. I do like to add a touch of bone broth or chicken broth to mine, like a fourth cup. It really doesn't need much at all because I really like to add the juice from pepperoncini peppers. Now, we like a lot of pepperoncini peppers, so I'm gonna add the rest of this bottle. It's just under half full and the juices. You don't have to add that much if you don't want to, but y'all, we love them. And yes, the juice, these are medium, but you can get them mild too, if that's what you prefer. Usually we use a whole pack of ranch. I do have this packet where I only used a little bit out of it though. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all of that ranch in there. And then you also want to add a packet of au jus gravy mix. Now, one time I went to the grocery store and I made this with brown gravy mix because they were out of au jus. It just wasn't as good. You gotta use the au jus gravy mix. Now, this recipe always calls for something like a half stick to a whole stick of butter. I think that's 
I think that's overboard to be honest because this has so many good flavors, you just don't need that much. I've made this before not adding butter at all and it was absolutely delicious. We've got about two and a half tablespoons or so of butter. I'm gonna add that in, but that's it. I'm not gonna be adding a full stick, half stick, nothing like that. It just doesn't need it. Now, this is gonna cook and then you can shred the chicken if you want. We love serving ours over rice. It's so good that way because the rice absorbs all of those liquids from this and it is delicious. Everybody gets excited on Mississippi chicken night. Okay, let's just kinda do this, get all these flavors in there together and it is ready. Look how easy this was, an absolute favorite. Now it's time for me to clean up the sink full of dishes, but, but I won't have to do it the night I make these. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you need more inspiration, you are going to love the video above.